Thank you. Very good morning to all of you, and thank you so much for attending uh, this historical event at NJIT. Today, we are very pleased to inaugurate the National Academy of Inventors chapter at NJIT, and we are very grateful to the National Academy of Inventors leadership, the president, and the board of directors that they have approved the NAI chapter at NJIT. We are privileged and we are among the leading universities in the nation to have such a chapter. So before I start providing the details and the induction ceremony to congratulate the inductees from faculty, staff, and also our facilitator and administrators who have been big supporter to research innovation and entrepreneurship pathways at NJIT, I would like to request our provost and senior executive vice president, Dr. Fadi Deek, to give some welcome remarks. Thank you so much, Atam. Good morning again. Uh, everyone, Atam, thank you for giving me the opportunity to also speak briefly today. It was a pleasure for me to be here yesterday to greet everyone and welcome everyone. Today, I would like to say thank you to everyone who is back. Let me start with Atam Duwan, who himself is responsible for every small and big organizational, uh, theoretical, thoughtful, down to the lunch and what we ate yesterday and what we'll eat today and um, the, the schedule and, and having a clock and cutting us off and all that stuff. Atam Dewan is behind all this. He himself has devoted the time to yield the event that we have today and that we had yesterday. Uh, but also I'm grateful that the panel is here again. I had no doubt that you'll come back. Um, I thank you for all your time, and as I noted yesterday, many have traveled from far away distances. Uh, I'm so proud of our students and our faculty. Uh, I sat here yesterday thinking about what was happening, what we were witnessing, and it's two things that we've been talking about for a long time. Student success and faculty success. That is what has propelled the university to be what it is today that is responsible for the transformation that has occurred at this university over the last n years and, and is not a large number. So uh, students, we're proud of you. Faculty, we are proud of you. Uh, I know that the faculty are proud of their students. So impressive, your presentations. Even our freshmen, you sit here and you listen and you think you're in the presence of resources, and you are. But Seasoned researchers, that's who was speaking when the faculty spoke. Of course, we expect this of them, but when the students spoke. So congratulations, faculty, for having such smart and accomplished students, and congratulations, students, for having such uh, smart and accomplished uh, mentors. You will look back, students, on these experiences, the research experiences, 10, 20 years, 30 years down the road, and you'll credit those experiences for the success that you are having with your career. So once again, Atam, thanks to you and your staff. And I know that this isn't just a one-man show. This is many people behind the scene, but I appreciate your leadership. I thank everyone again for being here. I thank our administrators, deans, and vice provosts, and everyone else. I thank our technical people in the back who do such marvelous work on our behalf. And I say congratulations to the inductees and to the Inventors Academy. Take it from here. Thank you so much, Dr. Deek, for your uh, tremendous support and leadership, without which uh, this should not have happened. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm, um, I'm very grateful uh, for the continued support, and specifically for the participation, as uh, Dr. Deek said. Um, it is all about the student and faculty. They are the enablers. They are the researchers. They are the innovators. They are the inventors, and they are the one who are going to be taking this innovation to the market and to make a difference in the society. They are our future. That's what we 
account for. So let me talk a little bit about the innovation. And it's an interesting thing that people talk about what is innovation. And actually yesterday, our chair, esteemed chair of the URI Board of Advisors, uh, Mr. Brian Carolyn talked about what innovation means and how does it differentiate from the basic research or even applied research. The question is that one word is finding creative solution. But the creative solution leads to some value proposition. But is that it? So my first question comes on to that particular regard, that is it a value or a vision of the future? Because everything that made our society a better one, a better livable one, with the technology that we had, wasn't invented yesterday. Somebody talked about the mRNA vaccine that we went through the crisis, but the mRNA was not invented yesterday. You know, it, it, it is a very good uh, example that I used to teach uh, in the undergraduate research and innovation at that time, IDS class, and the board remembers that, that the radon transform, that research paper was written by radon, who was a Russian scientist, in 1924. And in about f almost 50 years later, in early 1970s, Alan Cormack, who was the professor at Tufts University, took a sabbatical. Fadi will take a note of that, how sabbaticals are important. Took a sabbatical at Russian University. And then find out this particular paper, which was up on the shelf in the library, because we didn't have the archives or databases that time. You had to have the hard copy. And he dusted it off and said, this is cool. And he came back from the sabbatical and put a little instrument in his lab with the center, a hole with the radioactivity, and put some sensors together and measured the projection and thought that he could use the radon transform in order to reconstruct the radioactivity distribution source. And he was able to do that. And that was the birth of the computed tomography. And he was given Nobel Laureate Prize in 1974 for inventing the computed tomography in medical field. But really, it was based on radon transform. So that was vision, you know, somewhere. So, my question came over here, and, and the history is full of those particular examples. You are going to be mesmerized by the next thing that I'm going to show you. Can you see the date of that? It's 1924. Did we have cyber infrastructure at that time? No. Did we have a smartphone at that time? No. But somebody over there had a vision of having a radio doctor. And if you look into this particular picture, which I'm not making it up, this was published on a cover page. And it was 25 cents. I, I wonder <laughs> what 25 cents means in 1924 to us uh, now, right? But look into the thing. This particular patient has a sensor. It is a stethoscope. You wouldn't like to have that stethoscope today. But it is a stethoscope, right, on the chest. There is somewhere the video camera, and I couldn't figure it out where it is, but it's probably at the top of that particular console because uh, the patient tongue is out. So the doctor is able to see that, right? Um, there is a printer <laughs> to write the prescription. Really? <laughs> Was there an infrared printer at that time or, you know, whatever, technology? And look into the speaker, right? This is like gramophone, HMV. I don't know, you know, you are very young students. Uh, you may have not even heard the word HMV. 
but HMV was the gramophone company at that time. So the, the article talked about, look here, stick your arm there, hold this, and doctor will write your prescription. This is what today we call telemedicine, right? So, and then in about like 30 years later, 30 some years later, in 1953, it happened. It happened through radio. There was a real doctor in the United Kingdom who actually treated patient through radio, the birth of the telemedicine the real birth of the telemedicine. So, so the question comes in there. We have been promoting, and my advisor when I was a PhD student was a big supporter of telemedicine. But from 70s to 80s to 90s, we couldn't get any track of the telemedicine. Nobody accepted or realized the value proposition associated with that invention, that innovation. Until we got into the pandemic, and everybody started writing apps about it and this thing and that thing, and, and I know one of our keynote speaker, Dan Henderson, is, is an inventor of so many apps and the video phones and video talks and other stuff over there. That was enablers. They were enablers to what we could do. 10 years ago, I couldn't find on Horizon Blue Shield Blue Cross app anything related to the telemedicine. But in the last one and a half year, every provider company, insurance company, started putting the link that you can actually see a doctor, telemedicine, right? So we got that track. So the vision that was in 1924, how many years did it take to realize the value? So when we talk about the value proposition associated with an invention, and this is how we define the innovation, we got to stop and think a bit. Is it really the vision or really a value? So I would leave it to you. At NJIT, we took that particular principle, that particular concept, and why we distinguish ourselves a unique polytechnic research university at the nation is that because our strategic plan that was developed through the faculty and the leaders, the chairs and the, and the deans and the outside consultant and also the help of the board members, Dr. Govira uh, brought uh, United Nations uh, Environment and Sustainability speakers you know, uh, in there uh, uh, two years ago uh, to help us put our strategic priorities together. We take pride of putting these two things together, vision and a value. So we, our strategic clusters area for the research are actually centered and focused for research to innovation with the vision of its translation with value. And that's why not only we have 135 research labs, institutes, and centers, we also have New Jersey Innovation Institute. And the CEO, Mr. Simon Nines, is sitting over here. Simon, stand up and uh, be recognized. <laughs> Simon is going to be inducted today as an honorary member to the National Academy of Inventor because he's the leader, he's the facilitator from innovation to market. So um, where we stand with our research, innovation, and translational uh, strategies, path, entrepreneurship pathways um, uh, uh, enterprise, I'm very, very proud that our leadership, but basically our students and our faculty enabled this to happen because they are the researchers. They are the innovators. They are the inventors. That we had 142% increase in external research funding in the last five years. 
we go through the full cycle in our research enterprise from research to innovation for securing protection of the research results so that they can be brought into the market through the intellectual property and patenting the technology, doing a validation through the translational research, and that's how the NJII you know, comes into the picture, uh, licensing and doing the technology transfer, either through the spin-off companies or by you know, doing the technology transfer to the third party, and then go through the commercialization process. This particular program, the undergraduate research innovation that emerged from interdisciplinary design studio, and I have the witnesses as the board members sitting over here, saw several students took that particular pathway. They were given and funded by the uh, URI program for student seed grants, and they took it from there from phase one to phase two and phase three to commercialization. The student did found, uh, did, uh, did establish the startup companies, and we are very proud of that. So the overall impact that the NJIT Research and Innovation Enterprise has made is by the outside party, consulting company, who estimated the impact of the NGIT to the society was over 2.8 billion. And that's why we are the National Technology Research Polytechnic University. So the mission of the NGIT chapter of the National Academy of Inventor is to recognize these leaders, is to honor them, but also to Put them in front of us as the role model, as the people who are inspiring our students and younger generation, but at the same time, who are the core of the facilitation of the innovation to entrepreneurship so that we can bring the, the research and the invention that emerge from the research labs, centers, and institutes to the society. That's why we are proud and privileged to have the NAI chapter at NGIT. So this synergistic interaction with all the stakeholders take, uh, they, they say that it takes a village to bring a research to the market. And at the end, there are so many other variables when a product becomes successful in the market that is well beyond the scientific research that was conducted as the birthplace for that particular innovation. So how do we create that ecosystem? How do we bring those stakeholders into our network so that students can understand what does it take to take that particular research outcome from their research lab from their thesis, from their dissertation, in the hands of the user. It's a long, long journey, and it's a very risky one. But how do we treat our students to become entrepreneur? We need a platform. The platform that we started with ideas and then provided a continued support through URI program and through NJII, but we need a national platform, and there couldn't be a better platform than having access to the National Academy of Inventors, and that's why we are here today. So our charter is recognize and honor the faculty and the students, promote NGIT inventions, foster invention-focused networking and educational activities so that that particular wheel, the circle, continues you know, from research to entrepreneurship. We provide mentoring and advising the student, and you are going to see in a bit that how we are going to do it. Uh, facilitate technology innovation entrepreneurial, entrepreneurship pathways by bringing the stakeholders, by telling. Yesterday, Brian mentioned 
that it was a blast of the presentation yesterday, and it continues today. But what is the next step? What do we tell our students? Wow, you got a fantastic idea. You got a great vision uh, outcome you know, from, from your project. Does it have to finish over here after you graduate? How do we continue? How do we create that continuum from research and its translation to market? So our activities not only are going to be focused on the recognition that we are just doing today, recognizing our inventors and the leaders, uh, by inducting them into the National Academy of Inventor, to which I'm very, very grateful, but also having these activities, the URI workshops, the Innovation Day, and graduation, um, you know, there, there, there is also the uh, Graduate Research Day at NGIT, but more importantly, bringing industry investors to the campus and let them see what we are doing. And I'm very proud to recognize that a majority of our board members are angel investors. So what I said yesterday to the student at the end of the tagline, we want to have fun in research and innovation, but we want somebody else to pay for it. And these are where the angel investors come in there. And even though you know, they are investing in they are investing in you. They are investing in future of the society. So it is a win-win situation. So I, I'm going to be um, presenting to you in a, a, a just very quick overview. The National Academy of Inventors have um, the NAI Fellow, to which um, that is the highest recognition bestowed by NAI those who have accomplished not only securing the intellectual property, but taking them to the market and commercializing it. We have senior members who are on their pathway to become fellow, and then we have members as we recognize the value of their intellectual property and then you know, look forward for them to become fellow at one particular point. So I'm very, very proud to reiterate that NGIT has shown its excellence in terms of the faculty research and innovation, and NAI has recognized that with the fellow. So I would like to request the NAI fellows in, 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 in here to please stand up and be recognized, and we have Raj Dawe here. We have Mengchu Zhao. Nirwan Ansari. We have Craig Gottsman, Dean Craig. Dr. Kamlesh Sarkar, he could be here. Dr. Som Mitra, I saw him somewhere. There you are. And you are truly. <laughs> we have two senior members here. Um, Shagnik Basare, I saw him somewhere. There he is. <laughs> and Dr. Ian Suli, I think he couldn't. Oh, there you are. Thank you. Thank you for all your contributions and making NGIT proud. So uh, the NGIT chapter, uh, as I mentioned, as the membership, but also we need to create the stakeholdership networking and facilitate the pathways for students and the faculty inventors to take their research to market. And for that, we would be establishing an advisory board. And uh, these are the members of the advisory boards, the fellows, and also our friends, investors, those who can provide the gateway for your research lab to come to the real world. And we will be talking a lot. So um, 
We're putting a little bit of pressure on our advisory board because we are launching it today. And this is the, you can see the, 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 the start of a process that we all have to take seriously and commit ourselves so that we can bring new accomplishment and new level of, next level of excellence of research and innovation to our uh, students and faculty. Uh, so today uh, we are honoring uh, the uh, members of the faculty as an inventor members and several of the members are here. So in the interest of the time, uh, I'm going to be requesting those inventor members that I communicated uh, who would be bestowed uh, the membership of the NAI today in a few minutes. Uh, please stand up and recognize the, the inventor members that are here. I think Isavit is here, for example. Yeah. Uh, Chang is there. Uh, Jay Megoda. Pushpendra Singh, Masood Sahin, Wen Jang, Roberto Rojas Siza, Sotirio Giavras, Adip Niver, Ziming Zi, Vivek Kumar, Tara Alvarez, Trina Arunjay, Boris Kursid, Edward Dregen, Zhao Yang Zhu, Morat Gawardian, and Dean Moshe Kam. <laughs> Mengyan Li, Hao Chen, Wumi Sadek, and Dean Kevin Belfield. <laughs> James Geller, Chris, uh, Christian Borsia, Sajuti Basurai, uh, Mark Cartwright, Ianis Kutis, and Baruch Sherber, Caesar Bandera, and uh, our two board members, Brian Kiernan and Dan Henderson. <laughs> All right, so um, we are also going to be uh, inducting our honorary members for th those who are leaders and who are facilitators because without their great effort, we would not be able to uh, bring the resources to create those pathways. So they are huge supporters. Uh, Dr. Joel Bloom, who's the president and big supporter, uh, he is away. Uh, but please join me in uh, uh, welcoming him uh, to uh, the NAI uh, as an honorary member. Uh, Dr. Fadi Deek is here. Uh, Simon Ninas is there. And uh, Gobi Rao. Manish Patel, William Lutz, Director of Commercialization, uh, he's away. Uh, Sanjeev Chokshi, here. and um, Shivan Boodoo, who has been great, great supporter. <laughs> At the same time, uh, as I mentioned uh, in today's remarker, uh, in, in my remarks, uh, the presentations that the student are making um, today and who made yesterday, the board is scoring all those uh, presentations and will make a recommendation for the first batch of the students to be inducted into the Student Inventor Club. And if you are inducted, we are going to be following up with another ceremony and you will have access to the National Academy of Inventors Gains Network, which is you know, a huge resource. So we will be continuing with planning our activities and bringing networking resources to you uh, in the fall. So uh, I would like to take this opportunity to give a special thanks to the NAI uh, leadership, particularly Dr. Paul Semberg, uh, Ms. Jade uh, Stewart, Ms. Cheryl Hedrick, Ms. Yashira Cabrera, Ms. Maureen Case, and Dr. Roger Johnson. Without their great, great support and the tremendous guidance 
to me as well as to Siwan, through Siwan. Siwan did a great job uh, in, in uh, putting together uh, the whole protocol and finding out how we are going to do it. So thank you, Siwan, for all your managing um, uh, efforts. Uh, and, and thank you again uh, to NAI leadership for allowing us to make it happen. And now it's my great pleasure. Do we have, um, do we have connected? Okay. So it's my great pleasure to introduce today's uh, keynote speaker and also um, the, the, the person that we look for aspirations, the person who is a role model the person who is the leader, not only at NAI, but also representing the US Patent and Trademark Office as the regional director. It is our great honor to welcome Ms. Elizabeth Jofferty to uh, the inaugural event and the induction ceremony and I'm very grateful, Elizabeth, that you have joined us and for your time and your encouragement. And we look forward to hearing some uh, guidance and some welcome remarks and some wisdom from you. Elizabeth. Thank you, and thank you for that kind and generous introduction. I sincerely regret not being able to be there in person with you and I look forward to a future opportunity to participate with the NJIT NAI chapter in person on your campus. Good morning, Provost and Senior Executive Vice President Deke, Senior Vice President for Research Dewan, New Jersey Institute for Technology Researchers, Scientists, Inventors, Innovators, Students, and Special Guests. I'm honored to be with you, albeit virtually, and to have this opportunity to celebrate innovation and more specifically, the accomplishments of the New Jersey Institute of Technology inventor community. In that vein, I'm excited and proud to help launch the NJIT chapter of the National Academy of Inventors and to induct its inaugural members as a part of your summer research symposium and innovation day. I join you today, both in my role as the USPTO's Eastern Regional Outreach Director and is a member of the National Academy of Inventors Board of Directors. Since the early years of our republic, intellectual property has been the engine behind America's economic and cultural development. Recognizing its importance, our founding fathers included IP rights in the Constitution itself. James Madison, for example, in Federalist Paper 43, argued that creating patent law was a matter of reason and public good. This may be why, and in the body of the Constitution itself, prior to the amendments that followed, the word right is mentioned only once, and that is in Article 1, Section 8, Clause H, 8, which grants Congress the power to promote the so progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and inventors the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries. The founders were wise and far-sighted in providing these rights. For this nation's greatest inventors, backed by our dynamic patent system, went on to change the world. Think about it. When the first Patent Act was passed in 1790, we would have arrived here today by horse and buggy. We would have been meeting by candlelight, and anesthesia during surgery, well, it would have been merely a shot of whiskey. Indeed, in George Washington's day, the state of the human condition was virtually the same as in ancient Rome. But the advent of the United States and the IP rights brought with them unprecedented development, incentivized by the protections and rewards of our patent system. With American patents, humans began to fly they made light, they enabled instant communications across the globe, treated disease and disabilities, and so much more. Of course, a variety of conditions contributed to these remarkable innovations, 
and we cannot trivialize any of them. But it would be a mistake to overlook or minimize the critical contributions of the American patent system, most importantly, because it democratized invention. There was no need to be friends with the crown and no need to be wealthy to innovate. Anyone could participate. Indeed, with the strong backing of our patent system, there were ample final financial incentives to do so. By granting IP rights, we encourage innovators to take risks, to develop their ideas, and to start businesses. That is what put American ingenuity at the forefront of every major scientific and technological revolution since, and why innovation is the lifeblood of our national economy. Tomorrow, July 31st, will be the 231st anniversary of the issuance of the first U.S. patent. Tomorrow, July 31st. Granted to Samuel Hopkins for his invention of making pot and pearl ash, patent 1X as it, as it is now known, would the, lead the way for millions to follow. This year, I am proud to report the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office issued U.S. patent number 11 million. It was issued to 4C Medical Technologies for its prosthetic heart valve invention. The utility patent covers Alta Valve, the heart valve replacement technology, which is currently being evaluated in clinical research studies. Awarded on May 11th, it was issued a mere three years after the USPTO issued patent number 10 million. The speed of invention and innovation are ever increasing. In the words of U.S. Secretary of Commerce, Gina Raimondo, this momentous benchmark is a reminder of the remarkable and enduring tradition of American innovation that has driven our nation forward for generations. Building our economy back stronger requires new ideas and innovative solutions from every sector, and that includes academia. The inventors, Saravana Kumar and Jason Dietering, shared that the Alta valve is implanted using a catheter and is currently the only device that preserves the native mitral valve. It has the potential to treat patients with failed mitral valve repair. Inventor Dietering shared, the 4C medical beginning is a true story of American entrepreneurship, where Jason and I worked in a garage many nights and weekends to turn this idea into reality. 4C's medical approach to inventing is simple and one replicated in labs and garages across the nation. We identified a need, created a solution, and demonstrated its benefits. We're a team of highly driven and creative engineers who are committed to bringing life-saving technologies to people who need it most. As NJIT researchers, scientists, and inventors, you're probably not working in the garage nights and weekends. Rather, you're creating, transforming, and developing at the Biosmart Center and its host of laboratories, or the Center for Rehabilitation Robotics, or the Membrane Science and Engineering Technology Center. Whatever your campus location, you are harnessing the most unique of human qualities, the power to reason, to work together, to invent, to create. That is what inventors do. And that is what we celebrate and worked to protect each and every day at the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. The wonder of invention, the brilliance of inventors, and the giant leaps they urge upon mankind. For through the doors of the USPTO comes our future. Through the examiner's hands will pass the cure to cancer. Before their eyes will come compounds that alleviate thirst and hunger. They will touch machines that transport humans to other planets, and they will handle processes that enable devices to think and create on their own. Through these doors come science and technology that we cannot even contemplate today. And they will come from inventors and innovators, including you. The USPTO's chief economist and his team, along with our colleagues at the Department of Commerce, have been able to put numbers to some of that impact in a report that was issued a few years ago on US IP intensive industries. Their findings reflect that IP intensive industries directly and indirectly 
supported 45.5 million jobs, nearly one-third of all U.S. employment. The share of total U.S. GDP attributable to IP-intensive industries is about 40%. And importantly, workers in IP-intensive industries earned an average wage that is almost 50% higher than wages in non-IP-intensive industries in the private sector. But IP isn't just vital for the growth of our economy. It also provides for the growth of an inventive mindset for our children. And this is invaluable because those who go on to invent have the power to change our world. With that said, innovation is too important to leave to chance. It holds the key to our future prosperity. So we owe it to ourselves and the future of this country to set the stage for innovation by broadening the innovation ecosphere. Put differently, we need a higher percentage of our population to participate. In addition to focusing on STEM and IP education, externships and hands-on industry opportunities, we must also identify proper role models for young people so they will look to futures in engineering and tech, especially when it comes to women. And this is where an NAI chapter can bring so much value to a university. Women constitute over half of the population of the United States, but their participation in STEM jobs and the IP system lacks far behind their male counterparts. In the United States, less than 25% of the STEM workforce comprises women. The participation of women as inventors named on U.S. patents is even lower. Indeed, according to a, according to a USPTO study issued in 2019 and updated again in 2020, women inventors comprise only 12.8% of all of the inventors named on U.S. patents granted in 2019. The good news is New Jersey is above the national average with about 18% inventor rate of women but we can and we must do better. At the USPTO, we're redoubling our efforts to reach across demographic groups and geographic boundaries to broaden participation in the innovation ecosystem. In fact, we have stood up the National Council for Expanding American Innovation, or the NCEAI. The NCEAI is charged with strategizing new ways to expand American innovation by tapping into the strengths of our nation's diversity, and increasing the opportunity for all Americans to participate in innovation. We are doing this by bringing together government, academia, and industry. Ultimately, the NCAI's mission is to help the USPTO develop a comprehensive national strategy to increase participation in innovation by encouraging, empowering, and supporting all future innovators. That includes increasing the involvement of women and other underrepresented groups. And while today's numbers are discouraging, they point to significant potential. A recent Harvard study found that increasing invention rates among women, minorities, and children from low-income families can up to quadruple the rate of U.S. innovation. In today's highly competitive global economy, it's increasingly important to ensure that all Americans who are willing to work hard, persevere, and take risks, have the opportunity to innovate, to start new companies, to succeed in established companies, and ultimately achieve the American dream. In other words, we need all hands on deck. So let me close with a New Jersey success story. Born in Irvington, New Jersey, Dr. Erna Schneider Hoover was an American mathematician notable for inventing a computerized telephone switching method, which revolutionized modern communication. The method prevented system overloads by monitoring call center traffic and prioritizing tasks on phone switching systems to enable more robust service during peak calling times. At Bell Laboratories, where she worked for over 32 years, Hoover was described as an important pioneer for women in the field of computer technology. In fact, for her invention, termed Feedback Control Monitor for Stored Program Data Processing System, Hoover was awarded one of the first software patents ever issued. 
As a result of her invention, she became the first woman supervisor of a technical department at Bell Lab and has been inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame. The principles of her invention are still being used in telecommunications equipment in the 21st century. In order to maintain our competitive edge in an increasingly competitive global environment, we must harness the intellect and energy of as many diverse and creative inventors as possible. America's inventors, and including and especially those we celebrate here today, will continue to be at the heart of it, making it all possible. So this is a very special occasion, and I congratulate all of you for taking the opportunity to launch an NJIT NAI chapter to recognize, support, and celebrate your invention community. I wanna personally thank you for all of the noble work that you are doing here at the New Jersey Institute of Technology. Thank you again for the privilege of speaking here with you today. It's an honor to be here. At this time, I think we are going to transition to the NAI chapter induction ceremony portion of our program, and I am happy to participate. I do have a letter from uh, Dr. Paul Sandberg, who is the head of the NAI. And I will read it at this time, uh, unless uh, there is a, another plan in place. No, please go ahead. Okay, very good. Greetings, New Jersey Institute of Technology chapter of the NAI. On behalf of the board of directors of the National Academy of Inventors, congratulations on launching an official chapter to celebrate the outstanding contributions NGIT faculty, staff, and students have made to academic innovation and inventions. Congratulations to the new members being inducted today. The NAI is proud to have NJIT, a true innovation powerhouse, as a part of our membership. It is always a pleasure to hear of the continued success of NJIT's researchers. You have created an environment where research and innovation flourish in such diverse fields as bioengineering, chemistry, medicine, computer science, and much more. On behalf of the entire Academy, I would like to thank Dr. Siobhan Budhu for her commitment and dedication to honor, honoring and recognizing distinguished faculty and staff from NJIT. As you continue to grow as a chapter and as individual innovators, I challenge you to constantly elevate your work. I would like to offer my congratulations to Rajesh Dave and Meng Chu Zhao, 2020 fellow inductees. We hope to welcome them along with NAI fellow Nirwan Ansari and senior member Un Su Lee for their official induction ceremony at our 10th annual anniversary meeting in Tampa, Florida. As a member institution of the NAI, NJIT has the exclusive opportunity to recognize active researchers and faculty with success in patents, licensing, in commercialization at the national level through the fellow and senior members program. I hope that as you continue to expand your work and your networks, you will consider nominating yourself and your peers. This year's 10th anniversary annual meeting will draw 400 NAI members, partners, and friends to Tampa, Florida, October 31st to November 3rd, and conclude with the induction of the newest NAI fellows. The induction ceremony will take place at the new First Well Certified Hotel JW Marriott Water Street in downtown Tampa with featured remarks from none other than Drew Hirschfeld, the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office's Commissioner for Patents. I am pleased to report that the National Academy of Inventors continues to thrive in pursuit of our mission to honor academic invention. NAI membership currently comprises over 220 member institutions and over 1,400 fellows across the country and the globe. To date, over 50 institutional members have launched chapters, which now includes NJIT. Between them, our chapters have inducted over 2,000 academic inventors. Looking towards the future, the Academy seeks new ways to further our mission and enhance the visibility of academic invention. We are committed to maintain our position as a catalyst for change in the innovation ecosystem. We hope that you as an NAI chapter member will advocate for the importance of academic innovation 
and continue to educate and mentor your innovative students. Congratulations, and we are honored to have you as members of the NAI and celebrate your accomplishments. It is wonderful to see the NJIT chapter of the NAI grow, and we look forward to learning of your continued success. Sincerely, Paul R. Sandberg, President of the National Academy of Inventors. Uh, now at this time, I would like to invite the new members to stand that are present there in the audience or those who are uh, telecasting in like myself, please stand at your home location. Uh, so just to let you know, uh, the members to be inducted are uh, standing uh, and uh, waiting for uh, the oath ceremony. Uh, unfortunate. Sorry. Uh, unfortunately, we have the camera, but we are not being able to project the image um, on the screen. Uh, but we have all uh, the members to be inducted today. Uh, as an inventor member, as well as as honorary member, are standing up, and we wait for the oath ceremony. So please. Wonderful. Thank you. And again, I wish I could be there in person to see all of your uh, delightful smiles and to 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 do this in person. But let us let us begin. In recognition of your support and commitment to advancing technological development and innovation. I hereby declare and certify that you are members of the National Academy of Inventors and are granted all rights and privileges of the Academy. Congratulations to each and every one of you and congratulations to the chapter as a whole. Please be seated. Thank you so very much. I am very, very grateful for your time and your very inspiring uh, talk. Uh, your remarks are so inspiring to our students. Uh, just to let you know that um, this is the second day of uh, uh, undergraduate research and innovation summer uh, research symposium. And we uh, have 108 students project uh, featuring more than 134 students presenting from freshman to the senior year. And um, the presentations uh, have been clustered in five areas, as you uh, probably were able to see the slide, bioscience, bioengineering, uh, and um, uh, robotics and machine intelligence, uh, material science and engineering, data science and management, and environment and sustainability. All those strategic areas that are aligned with the uh, strategic priorities by the White House, and as well as funding agency, as well as the foundations and uh, global organizations such as United Nations Sustainability Initiatives. So, um, I think this is uh, a great event for our students to present to the board of advisors to URI program, and many of them are inter entrepreneurs and uh, successful inventors and angel investors uh, to um, guide our students uh, to help them and facilitate uh, the pathways from research and innovation from their lab to the market. So I think that uh, your talk has been uh, so inspiring, and I could see from the faces of our students that uh, they were glowing, and I wish that you would have been here to see the synergy in the air that you have created um, and, uh, and inspired uh, uh, our community. But we look forward uh, to having you visit us uh, sometime in the near future. And 
I, I would I, I would thank you again and the NAI leadership for allowing us to be a part of your distinguished community. Thank you so very much and congratulations on the completion of your symposium and innovation day. It certainly sounds remarkable. Thank you for encouraging, incentivizing and celebrating these young inventors. Um, again, I look forward to being with you in the future. It was lovely being a part of your event today and I wish you continued success in the future. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you so much. All right, that uh, concludes this particular special event, and uh, I would like to invite you for a lunch and networking session. And just two um, quick comments. Uh, the one is that, uh, as yesterday, I need to catch up with the scoring and the other things with the board members, so if you be kind to yield to board members to pick up their lunch, because uh, I have them working since nine o'clock yesterday. I will continue until uh, 3.30 today. Uh, so that would be greatly appreciated. And then um, we have the lunch uh, as we did uh, 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 in, in ballroom B side. Uh, so if you bring uh, your plates or the lunch on this particular table, uh, we are welcome to do, but then and then take your plates back to the garbage bins because uh, we have two more sessions in the afternoon and we wanted to have uh, uh, the tables clean. So thank you so very much uh, for joining us and um, we will be back in the next session right at 12.30 p.m. Thank you so much. I'm... Um.